fitness. Well, fit for what? To run a four-minute mile? Or to win a marathon swim? Well, certainly the professional athlete needs to be fit. But for the ordinary man, there is also a very important reason. He stands to gain a more active life, both physically and mentally. And as an added bonus, he may even extend his lifespan a good few years. Keeping fit will also give him an energy reserve that will help him to more fully enjoy his leisure time and help him to meet emergencies. Scramble vector 330 In an operational role, air crew skill and efficiency are not enough. To meet emergencies, which are a part of their job, air crew must have a high level of physical fitness. Without a reserve of energy, a pilot lacks mental alertness. His reactions are slow. He could endanger his own life and the lives of others. To safeguard property and preserve life is the code of the firefighter. But there's little point in knowing how and where to direct water at a fire if the firefighter is too tired to hold the hose. Physical fitness enables you to do your job with maximum efficiency and yet have sufficient energy reserve to cope with any emergency. Only by doing regular, vigorous exercise can the lifeguard make that rescue. But most of us are like the office worker. We slow down easily and our leisure time is too inactive. We have no reserve of energy. A hurried call from home, a domestic emergency, then a hard run across the parking lot that could mean suicide. Exhausted, we are incapable of making quick decisions and cannot drive safely. We are accident prone and a menace to others on the road. What's the answer? Well, the answer for everyone should be keep fit and stay alive. Now, if you are normally healthy, the only way to achieve physical fitness is through physical activity. Sports are excellent. However, they are often expensive, time consuming, and even impossible for some people. To develop physical fitness, an exercise must be balanced and planned. It must be progressive. And above all, it must be vigorous and regular. A little vigorous activity once a day is much better than a lot of activity once a week. Well, with these requirements in mind, the Royal Canadian Air Force developed a system of exercises and called it the 5BX plan. 5BX simply means the five basic exercises. In this plan, there are six charts. The five basic exercises in chart one are easiest to perform and become progressively more difficult up to chart six. In each chart, the number of times that each exercise is repeated also gradually increases, but keeping within a total time limit of 11 minutes. Everyone starts on the lowest level of chart one. Younger persons progress at a more rapid pace and, depending on their physical capacity, reach and maintain their level on charts four or five. Older persons progress more slowly and reach and maintain their levels on charts two or three. In other words, if you are 20 or under, you increase the number of exercise repetitions from day to day. But if you are, say, 40 to 49 years, you increase the number of repetitions only each week until you reach the level of fitness prescribed for your age grouping. It is the intention in this film to demonstrate the five basic exercises and the way they increase in difficulty from chart to chart. It will also explain those exercises that are sometimes done incorrectly. The five exercises strengthen and improve the endurance of all the major muscles. It also conditions the heart and lungs for strenuous activity. Here you see our demonstrators in action. Notice that no equipment is required, that it is convenient, any small space will do, 
and it is simple. These are the exercises from chart two. Exercise, it also stretches and loosens the large body muscles and those on the back of the legs. Exercise number two conditions the abdominal muscles and those on the front of the body. If it is necessary, the feet may be hooked under a chair to keep them on the floor. The demonstrator shows that he comes to a fully upright position. The back must be kept straight throughout. Number three concentrates on the long back muscles. This exercise is effective from head to heels. These are the muscles responsible for maintaining an erect carriage when in balance, and this is important, when in balance with those on the front of the body. In four, the emphasis is on those muscles that are notoriously weak in most people, the arms and shoulders. How many people in their daily tasks are required to even raise their arms above their head? Exercise number five, and the most important, an exercise for the heart, lungs, and muscles of respiration. It is running on the spot, interspersed with various types of jumps. Here you see the stride jump, the arms raising sideways. An alternate exercise that may be done for those who like the outdoors is a walk or a run of a prescribed distance within a specific time. You have seen the five basic exercises. All the major muscles in the body have been used, so you see that it is balanced. Now we will take one exercise and show how it is modified from chart to chart to become more and more difficult to perform. Exercise four demonstrates very effectively the scientific progression that is a necessary feature in achieving physical fitness. In chart one, exercise number four is not very strenuous as shown by the demonstrator. Notice that the knees do not leave the floor. In chart two, we see him doing the well-known push-up. See now the extra effort that is required because of the variation that chart three incorporates. Chin, forehead, arm straight, back straight. Chart four progresses a step further. Notice how he has changed to a widespread hand position. This places greater stress on the arms and shoulders. In chart five, and now we are getting into the fitness class of the outstanding athlete, a hand clap is added to the push-up. The final variation and the most difficult exercise in this series is the push-up with the chest slam. It was mentioned there would be a demonstration of the correct method of doing the exercises that are sometimes done incorrectly. Running on the spot requires the feet to be lifted only four inches off the floor in charts one, two, and three. In charts four, five, and six, the knees are raised waist high this is the correct way to do the jumps in chart four. Notice the full squat and straight back. The position of the feet alternate during each jump. In charts four, five, and six, exercise number one, the bending exercise requires that the body be carried in a full circle. The hands and arms sweep across the body from their floor touching position. On the circle, the body is bent backwards as far as possible. Exercise two in chart four is often done incorrectly because the arms are allowed to precede the body to the sit-up position. The correct method is to have the arms straight, close against the ears, and carried in a wide arc to touch the toes. In addition to progressing through increasing the difficulty of each exercise, we progress by increasing the number of repetitions. In chart one, exercise number four starts out suggesting only two repetitions. As fitness improves, so the number of repetitions increases. And when you are ready to leave chart one, you will be doing 
13 of this type of push-up. Chart 2, with its greater demand for strength, starts out with 9 push-ups, but increases to 20. And so it is with each exercise in each chart. As you progress, greater demands are made upon you, so that you always have a figure to strive for. This is the self-measuring aspect of the plan. This, then, is the RCAF 5BX plan for physical fitness. You have seen how it works. It is simple, and it takes only 11 minutes a day. The plan guides and motivates you every step of the way to a high level of physical fitness. This is it. The rest is up to you. Get fit and keep fit with five. We'll also give him an energy reserve that will help him to more fully enjoy his leisure time and help him to meet emergencies. Scramble vector 330. In an operational role, air crew skill and efficiency are not enough. To meet emergencies, which are a part of their jobs, air crew must have a high level of physical fitness. Without a reserve of energy, a pilot lacks mental alertness. His reactions are slow. He could endanger his own life and the lives of others. To safeguard property and preserve life is the code of the firefighter. But most of us are like the office worker. We slow down easily and our leisure time is too inactive. We have no reserve of energy. A hurried call from home, a domestic emergency, then a hard run across the parking lot that could mean suicide. Fitness. Well, fit for what? To run a four minute mile? Or to win a marathon swim? Well, certainly the professional athlete needs to be fit. But for the ordinary man, there is also a very important reason. He stands to gain a more active life, both physically and mentally. And as an added bonus, he may even extend his lifespan a good few years. Keeping fit. But there's little point in knowing how and where to direct water at a fire if the firefighter is too tired to hold the hose. Physical fitness enables you to do your job with maximum efficiency and yet have sufficient energy reserve to cope with any emergency. Only by doing regular, vigorous exercise can the lifeguard make that rescue.